Welcome to the Hail to the King podcast. I'm Mark. And I am Magnus. And today we are going to talk about A Very Tight Place, a short story in Just After Sunset by Stephen King. And this is one that we've been really excited to talk about since before we had a podcast. Anytime we would read it, we would call <laughs> each other up and say, hey man, I read really A Very Tight Place again. You know, yeah, awesome. You know, it, it's just a really, it's a fun, gross out story. And, uh, this is one of the ones that we wanted to do uh, once we got this podcast going. So, um, quick, quick, uh, kind of cliff notes version of the story. Um, it's about two neighbors who have a land dispute. Uh, one of them has a dog. The other guy hates the dog. Puts up an electric fence. The dog ends up dying in the electric fence. They go into legal battles over, you know, whose side of the property that electric fence was on. And it turns into years and years of them just squabbling in court. And right, it's it's years, right, since the dog died. Uh, no, it and it seems recently. somewhat recent. Somewhat recent. I mean, they, I, they've just hated each other for years. Yeah, you know? they've hated each other for a while. It started out with uh, another neighbor. So there's there's Curtis uh, Curtis Johnson, the main character Curtis who um, who is homosexual, and it doesn't sound like that's important, but it does play a part. Later, yeah. There's Tim Gr- uh, Grunwald, um, the TMF. TMF. <laughs> the TMF. Keep and it then, family friendly here. And then there's another neighbor, and they actually go like the other neighbor dies. Before he dies, he has both of them mm-hmm. like offers both of them a this, piece of land, a piece of land that they both have you know plans to do stuff. Prime with. real estate. They live in Florida and. Uh, is that Turtle Turtle Island? It is. Yep, Turtle, Turtle Island. Island. Which again, Stephen King, Turtle Man. There you go. Um, yeah, it's a piece a uh, piece of property that you know could be good for like a real estate company to put apartments up on or whatever. You know, beach condos. You know, kind of the. Uh, it's it's in a neighborhood of millionaires. You know, self made millionaires and stuff. And there's this piece of property. They're all kind of worried that maybe eventually it'll be you know commercialized for tourist type people and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, so they get in this this dispute, and just to mess with him, he gets that electric fence, ends up killing his dog. See, you know? it's kind of implied that it's on purpose, but... Yeah. But anyways, uh, they... Uh, Grunewald gives a phone call to the other guy and says, you know, meet me here, and I'm ready to talk, you know, truce on this whole feud that we have going. So yeah. then he meets him out at... Uh, at a construction site for the business that he owns that's actually going under. Uh, he has a lot of legal problems. Mm-hmm. But uh, he st- sticks him up with a, a gun, forces him into a porta potty you know, pretty much says, everything in my life, all the, all the things that are wrong, my wife divorcing me, uh, my business going down, uh, you know, just all the stuff with you. It's, it's all because of you. And he, he, ta- he has this, like, dilute... He, maybe the... Uh, Okay, it's revealed that he has cancer, and it seems like the cancer is kind of the, the cherry on top of all of his life's problems, and he just, you know, probably is a little bit crazy, actually insane by uh, what's going on. Circumstances. You know, circumstances, everything. yeah. And so he invents, he, he turns his neighbor into a, a witch. He's, he calls him a gay witch. And he, and he does, like, that's the whole reason he's like, you know... You like gay and witch somehow are connected in his in Grunwald's mind. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know how, but it's really funny. <laughs> yeah, it, he's he's like a, a crazy person, like a crazy cat lady, you know. But he's a crazy rich real estate mogul yeah. who's decided, and you know he's probably a little homophobic beforehand. Kind of guy who, you know, watches like really you know those like super conservative type uh news shows where they're just like you know bible belt yeah uh, you know that that whole thing uh god hates you know fag right yeah uh anyways the uh uh he sticks him up with a gun he forces him into a porta potty and says you know you're the cause of all my problems and then he pushes the porta potty over door facing down and it's a construction uh, grade port potty and uh, so it's reinforced with uh, 
metal sheeting. metal sheeting so that uh, vandals can't just you know break it open or whatever. So he pushes it over, and he's pretty much stuck in a porta potty coffin. You know, sideways with <laughs> with the crap just dripping down slowly on him. You know, it's it it pushes over into like a ditch, so it was already kind of pushing over anyways. But um, uh, anyways, this is his story of being in a literal pit of despair. If you're familiar with Joseph Campbell, right? Yeah. Hero of a Thousand Faces. Anyways, he is in the pit of despair, and he has to deal with the situation. He seems like he's at the end of his, uh, you know, I think it's like two days in there. And he's pretty much, uh, you know, sometimes feeling like it's the end of his life. Other times he's trying to find a way out. He eventually crawls into the uh, the, the compartment, the, the poop area. What do you call that? The pit? <laughs> the poop pit. The poop pit. <laughs> so he crawls into there through the through the seat hole you know, in the porta potty and he has to kind of slosh around in the mud oh. and be, oh, he, and he does this because he sees a ray of light coming from the bottom of the porta potty like once it's tipped over the bottom is exposed and he can see where two uh, layers of the plastic that made makes the porta potty um, is a little bit weak I guess or yeah. thin yeah from how it tipped over and the construction grade Sheeting is not protecting the bottom because why do you would you need to protect the bottom of a porta potty, right? Yeah. And uh so yeah, so that's the weak point that he eventually gets out of there. And he gets out of there by He has the inspiration yeah. from his dog Betsy. He has a, he has a dream. A, a a vision. A vision, yeah. <laughs> from his dog, and it's a dog collar that is just thin enough to act as a, a makeshift screwdriver to help him get all the screws out so he can escape. Yeah, it's a, it's, what are, what are they? It's a little tag. dog tag. Dog tag. Yeah, and so he uses that. Like a, like a, yeah, like a army dog tag. He says yeah. it's similar to that. And it's just thin enough that it can unscrew yeah. it. And he kind of has this, uh, this birth, this shit man birth. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you know, crawls out of the bottom of the porta potty, and he's just mud man covered in all that muck. And he, it's kind of the uh, I, I couldn't help but picture uh, Shawshank Redemption. That's exactly what you know? I was thinking. Yeah, it, it starts raining, and he's he's completely naked, and he's covered in poop, and he's just, you know, arms up to the sky, bathing in the the freedom. You know? Yeah, and he actually says like, when he takes his first breath of fresh air. It is like the sweetest thing he has ever tasted, mm-hmm. you know, and you feel that triumph. He's got a new a new look on life, you know, and he he uh, decides to he goes over to the construction trailer and gets a, a pair of overalls, just like yes. silly farmers looking overalls, you know, that some bumpkin construction worker type dude would have, you know, as yeah. extra clothes or whatever. And then he... Gets on his moped. Gets on the moped, goes back to Grunewald's house yeah. to confront him. And it's not very clear whether he's going to kill him and get revenge or, or what he's going to do. But uh, Grunewald, being the cancer-ridden, ill body man that he is, he likes to hang out in his hot tub. And uh, he says that his hot tub is the only place where he's happy. Yeah. You know, because it's just that's how he deals with his aches and pains. He says better than any painkiller, his hot tub is what keeps him alive. Yep. And uh, he's just in there, just taking a soak, and in walks uh, Curtis with these obs- yeah, not obscene, uh, kind of bizarre farmer's clothes. And you know his hair is kind of caked because maybe the rain didn't wash away all of the <laughs> all of the poop and whatever. So it's just kind of grimy all over you know in his elbow cracks and probably between his toes all dried up probably in his nostrils i think he blows a snot rocket at some point no no at some point he does like get the farmer is it out of his nose or something and he pick he picks like a little piece of poo speck on his cheek and flicks it at like flicks it 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 into the hot tub hot tub water just imagining imagining warm you know poop in a jacuzzi that's disgusting too. It's like the nastiest thing. And it's just foaming up and just oh, it's so gross. But uh, yeah, he, uh, he I love he drops the the hair dryer 
he drops a hair dryer in. Oh the, yeah, because he does. Tub. He does come with like a plan in mind, and he stopped by his own house and he had a hair dryer. Yeah, to do the the old hair dryer in the bathtub trick. Yeah, and uh, he just throws it in, but it's not plugged into the wall, so he just does. But it Grunwald to, doesn't realize that at first. Yeah, and he's just like, Haha, I'm just. <laughs> I'm just, just messing with yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then he jumps in the hot tub, and then you just picture all that poop just coming off of his skin and just become, you know, turning it into a giant toilet, pretty much, the jacuzzi. It's just gross. And he just sits in there like it's no big thing. He's like, hey, man, I escaped, and I'm, you know, I'm all better for it, and, you know, you're a despicable man. He, uh, I think at one point, talks about that he was coming there to kill him, and was gonna you know do that but he pretty much I, th- I think his ultimate reasoning is something like um you know you're you're despicable the police won't believe the story if you come after me again you know Th- right right that's kind yeah. of the, his reasoning yeah. in the end for sparing his life yeah, yeah well, i'm a like little he, fuzzy on that but yeah i i, I read it a couple weeks ago so not a not as uh <laughs> not as fresh not as but fresh the as gross out stuff is pretty fresh for me but the, uh, yeah, the reasoning, I remember I, I even listened to the, I listened to an audiobook version of it, by the way. Yeah. But uh, the, the ending, um, he, he lets him go pretty much just because he's despicable. He wants to see him live out his cancer days, and he wants, to, wants him to live long enough that he's going to smell as bad as he smells, right? Something like that. Yeah. Like the sickness inside mm-hmm. you and... Da, da, da. And he's like, and I want you to turn that gun, the hardballer. He's like, I want you to turn that on yourself one day. I want to hear the gunshot. You know, pretty much. Oh, that him. that is that is how it ends. He's yeah. like, you're gonna be in pain. I'm going to go on living, and I have. And he's like, and you're gonna know life. that my my gay witchcraft got me out of your your trap. You know, yeah. he's like, my, I I did it just you know to spite you. Yeah. Like I'm living to spite you even more. You yeah. Know? And it even that's how it ends. Like. Uh, he hears he hears the gunshot. He actually gets a new dog, and then his housekeeper. She's like, "What was that?" And he's like, "I think it was a backfire." You know, knowing it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, "Well, let's be a good neighbor and go make sure <laughs> oh, yeah, that he, Grunwald's okay." He's like, "Oh, Grunwald. He's like, he actually has cancer." He's like, "Maybe, maybe he did. You know, maybe we should go check on him as good neighbors." <laughs> And so that's and it's kind just of him, the last laugh. You know, and it's him totally wanting to go freaking see the suicide scene. It's pretty uh, pretty grim. But at the same time, this is the kind this situation totally warrants that kind of closure, you yeah. know? Like that I can't imagine having to dig out of a a situation like that, you know, literal poop, literal poop pit, you know? Oh, it's just so filthy. <laughs> no, I so when reading this, mm-hmm. I, you know, every, like, I'm sure you went to scout camp, Mm -hmm. you know, and the one thing, like, I remember at scout camp, I would try the whole week not to poo. (laughs) Because you don't, you don't want to poo in your camp. And so I'd hold it in, but, you know, Thursday comes along, and then, you know, Thursday night, and it was always at nighttime, it was never in the morning, Thursday night comes. Where you just can't do it And you have the flashlight, and it's just like, you go, and you're sitting there staring into the porta potty and I was always terrified that I up. was going to fall in, or Ugh. I always hated the idea. I'm like, what if one of those little flies goes <laughs> up my butthole <laughs> and, like, lays an egg? Or what if oh. a spider just goes up there, you know? Yeah, dude, that's bites me, <laughs> Bites me in the nethers. Ugh. And so I was so terrified, and then everybody's and, always thought I could fall in. Yeah. It has its own gravitation. No, anytime pull. you look into, a, like, an actual porta potty or, yeah, even a camping one, you know, like any kind of pit of poop, it's like... What if I fall in there? And, and you can't help but also picture, you know, like a monster down there. A, oh, mud, yeah. a mud man, a shit man, you know? And <laughs> it's just, it, there's so many fun visuals in this one. And uh, picturing that, I think the thing that I have the most problem with is if it's a porta potty it's going to have that blue, like, sanitation, like... Yeah, and it does, men- it does mention oh, that in here. And, like, it's got that kind of ammonia sting, the chemical sting... And just picturing that, like getting it in your eyes, in your nose, in your mouth, having oh. no way of cleaning that off, Jeez. other than rubbing it and, out. And it doesn't help that he keeps hurting himself, and he's like bleeding, and he's got like open bloody wounds that are just getting like poop in them. That's that's how uh, I think it was a uh, 
you remember Deadliest Warrior? They would talk about like in the Vietnam War, yeah. the, the Viet Cong Army would have the punji sticks, yep. I think is what they were called. And it was just poop covered bamboo sticks and in little pits for pe- the soldiers to injure themselves and get the bacteria in them. Yeah. It's like this, everything is just so gross. This is no this. good. I, I remember picturing, you know, it's good that he had that dog tag, but it's like what else could he use as a makeshift uh, screwdriver? And I'm like, in that situation, it kind of reminded me of the movie 127 Hours, by the way. Did you see or hear about that one? I know the story. The, I story, know the story of the, yeah. the, the hiker who gets his arm stuck and has to cut it off with a, a pocket knife. Yeah, but any, anyways, this one kind of reminded me of that a little bit. But um, yeah, I'm like, what would I use? What could I use on my body if my pockets are empty and I've got like clothes? What could I use as a screwdriver? And I'm like, I could knock out a tooth, like maybe knock out your front tooth, use that as a screwdriver. And, oh, man, yeah, it got me all cringy. Got me all cringy thinking about that. Because then you have to touch your mouth, I mean. Oh, and just knocking out your own tooth. It it, it was kind of like Saw, you know, the the, the traps in Saw. It's like, how bad do you want to live, you know? And then I thought about my toenail, my big toe, and I'm like, or or a thumbnail, just tear that off and use that as a screwdriver. Fold it up a little. Ew, (laughs) so gross. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I loved, I loved reading this one. I think I actually laughed yeah. out loud. It's 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 one I can read so many parts of this. Yeah, I can reread this one endlessly. Like, I mean, you know, I'll I'll usually listen to it twice in a row every time I come back because I'm like, yeah, that was awesome. I'm gonna read it again, <laughs> and it's just it's a I think a audiobook version is about two hours. Um, I've I think I've I read this one uh, with my eyeballs when it first came out when the book was brand oh, yeah. new. I think I was around 2008. Mm-hmm. Is that right? And uh, I was working at the, the Provo Mall as a security security guard. And for some reason, I'm just remembering that's where I read it. But uh, I remember reading the book at night because I was the, the graveyard security at the mall. And the book was new enough that the audiobook wasn't out. So I'm like, yes, I got the book brand new first day. Yep. And I'm just reading through it like crazy. And this one stood out to me. Uh, in particular, as well as N, in the Just After yeah. Sunset. N is a really good one that I'm excited to do at some point. Which actually, uh, is there anything else that we want to add to? No, this? I don't know. It's it just was... a fun one to talk about reading. I was yeah. try- When I was reading it, I read it for fun, but I was trying to think of any sort of connections. I, I think besides Shawshank Redemption and then the Turtle Island you yeah, know, Turtle Turtle Island. That's pretty much it for me. Um, as far as supernatural goes, you know, he has that little vision from his little dog, his faithful dog. Mm-hmm. You know, saying like, "Hey, a supernatural use, vision." Yeah. yeah, supernatural vision. But no, I don't have anything to say other than it's hilarious. It's funny that Stephen King it's, can turn. It's a good one. Oh, you could no. Sorry, the, the, he could turn that into a terrifying situation that is fun to read. It's um, great. And I, I know some people who you could literally talk about this and they'll start gagging. Like, they will uncontrollably be gagging. Like, I, there's somebody I know. It's my uh, my sister-in-law, Erica. You talk to her about blood or bacteria, feces, body, <laughs> bodily fluids of any kind, and she starts to literally gag. And sometimes she'll throw up. She'll throw up from words you could tell her words oh and make her throw up then i want and her this to is the kind of story that if i could trick her into reading like i would and you know maybe i'll try <laughs> talk talk to her husband anyways um yeah the great story a lot of fun to read if you've never read any stephen king this is a fun one to start with just to get an idea of his like characters yeah you know some of them can be a little over the top uh stereotype type dudes you know like this Grunewald, he's the, you know, grumpy, whatever, uh, yeah, um, conservative super mogul. Super conservative, um, homophobic. Homophobic mogul, you know. Neighbor. Yeah, real estate baron. <laughs> but, yeah, just, yeah, bad neighbor. Kind of reminds me of the one in the mist a little bit. Yeah, well. yeah, he does. He does, actually. And that's a really good But, good yeah, point. I uh, besides the turtle thing and the supernatural dream, not not really any Dark Tower stuff. No. But... It was written, uh, it's funny, it's one of the Stephen King locations, you know, Florida. He's got a couple stories, Duma Key, he's got this one. There was the Gingerbread Girl. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. It, uh, I, that's pretty much not not very many Florida ones, but this is one of his Florida stories. Yeah. So. No, it, it's it's a good one. Read it, and then <laughs> read it again because it, it is. <laughs> It's great. It's, it's so funny. It's a it's a good good gross out fun. There's uh, not a lot of Stephen King books, short stories, novellas that you can say are funny. Mm-hmm. And, and this but is this one, this yeah. is one of them. This is very <laughs> lighthearted, with a great Stephen King spin. Yeah, um, that brings me to uh, what what did we what did we want to read next? We were thinking fourteen oh eight. Fourteen oh eight. So I brought it up to Mark as this is one of my again one of my favorite short stories, one of the ones I wanted to do a podcast because of this story. Uh, and it's a haunted hotel room. And I'm, I'm excited because I actually have not read it. Uh, a lot of these I've read before. 1408, I haven't read. I really don't know anything, it's, it's anything almost about like, it other than what Magnus just said. It's almost like a short story version of The Shining. Okay. Like, it's it's a little different, but... Trust me, it's it's one of his best. I think it's one of his very first short stories that I ever read, actually. Okay. And I remember getting the chills. I was I was working as a, uh, I don't know, on my job I could I could use headphones, and uh, I I listened to the story and it just it literally gave me goosebumps listening to it at certain parts uh, of the audiobook. So, anyways, it's a good one. So go check it out and tune in next time, guys. Because uh, that's the one we're going to do. That, oh, that, that is in Just After Sunset. No, 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 no. That's from uh, Everything's Eventual. Yeah. Everything's Eventual has 1408, which is our next episode. Sorry, we sure. just got really excited. It's been a while since we've recorded uh, an episode for you guys. A lot of holiday stuff around Halloween that was taking up some time. But we're getting back on track. Yeah. And uh, just remember, if you guys you know, follow us on... On Instagram, uh, check us. Check out our videos. We hope to be hope to be putting this on iTunes and you know yeah, it's just a just real other, real podcast real soon. <laughs> yeah, other podcast For, platforms really soon. So, but we'll get this episode out on YouTube. You'll be checking it out on YouTube first. But, yeah, and we do take requests, and so you know if you guys have any ideas, send them our way. And always remember, there are other worlds than these. Ha 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 ha